I'm Rudy Escalera, the third. Robert Escalera. What are you feeling in this moment that you're installing your father's beautiful masterpieces? In? I feel honored and humble, to be honest. <clears throat> I mean, every time we have an opportunity to share his work, um, it's a fulfillment of a promise that we made to our mother, which we would share at the, at the dinner. It never ceases to amaze me every time I uh, install or we do an exhibit of my father's artwork, the reaction that people do, because none of these pieces were ever on display ever until after he was gone. So it's, it's, it's a big deal. Well, he asked a question earlier to one of the gals, and he asked her, have you ever seen anything like this before? And her response, to, without hesitation, was never before. Can you talk to us a little bit about your father's technique? As far as the color, uh, the reason he, he loves the vibrant colors and, and everything that he did is because that's how God created it. Um, when you go out in the world and you go traveling throughout the world and you, and you go places, what do you see? You see things exactly as they were meant to be, whether man-made or by nature. And, and so he tries to capture that essence that if you're looking at one of his uh, pieces of art, that you can actually put yourself in there and, and realize it as a reality. Yeah, one of his commentaries once before, I think you've heard this, Regina, is that if he could have captured the fragrance of a rose, he would have done that in his painting. So that was his aspiration, was to make it as realistic as possible. Yeah. He used a double zero paintbrush. That's what he ultimately evolved into, which is a very fine paintbrush with just limited hairs. Each one had a lifespan of 30 minutes. And he was exclusively 99.9% .9 oil-based paint. He painted with some acrylics, but mostly oil-based. So there was a very specific technique to that as well as far as the drying process, the hardening process. Totally a labor of love. He couldn't rush through anything. And tell me a little bit about the masterpieces because um, what's really significant about that is not just the subject and the detail, but how long it took him to accomplish and complete them. Five pieces as a whole were a combined effort of almost 20 years worth of work. But each piece was not painted in its, in its entirety at one time. Mm -hmm. It was as he was inspired to work on individual pieces. So he would work on one for a bit as it, as it came to him. Then he would leave that and, and address his energy towards something else and then uh, attempt working on other. It was nonstop but it took him over the course of that many years to complete all five and finally put his signature. It was a work in progress. He was the consummate type A personality, he couldn't sit still. So, I mean, it was not unusual for him to be working on multiple pieces simultaneously, but he'd get restless. Right. You know, so he'd go here, and also the lighting was very important. The time of day was very important, so he could get natural lighting. Okay. He liked to paint with natural light. and had a big impact on the colors that he used. You asked earlier about the, the tools, and my brother, <coughs> I mentioned about the double zero brushes, mm -hmm. but uh, another thing that he did to he was always challenging himself. So you'll notice that we have a couple pieces in here that were also done strictly with a palette knife, without a single brush stroke, uh. and he was still able to maintain his level of detail even with a palette knife as opposed to a brush. And he even went further. There is one piece that um, uh, it's a, it's kind of a cubism type of uh, piece. It's with a clown, mm -hmm. all made out of cubes. But to further challenge himself in that, he actually painted it on the reverse side of the canvas, not the smooth side, but the coarse oh. side, just to just to give himself another little something to, to, to yes. complete. Yeah. Now, Rudy, you mentioned the palette knife um, paintings, and can you tell us which ones those are? That One in particular is uh, the Revolution, which you see right here with uh, Gilbert Roland. It's mm -hmm. another main factor. And then the one up here is called Por Favor. It's called Por Favor. It was one of his least liked paintings. He just didn't care for it. He actually threw it away. And then my sister pulled it out of the trash and said, no, you're not going to do that. And, and he kept it. But it was, it was again, a, a completely different style than what you see in, in the rest of the art. He actually hated it. Really? <laughs> yeah, he put it in the trash, literally. Wow. And my, our sister Laura took it out of the trash. He didn't like it because it was out of proportion. The hands are large, you know, there's mm -hmm. lack of detail, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it was it's still beautiful. an expression. It is. Right, it's beautiful. It is. My brother and I, neither one of us are artists, but we understand how an artist thinks. You know, the passion that comes from inside to be an artist. And, and there's different forms of art, you know, there's carpentry, there's music, there's 
athleticism, everything is an art form. Right. But for my father, uh, when he would talk to young people that wanted to become artists, he he's basically tried to pull from them their inner passion. He says, you have to have a passion for this and you need to make it your own. But they can also see that every single piece is a, a literally, literally a labor of love. And that's the making, the true making of an artist in my eyes. Your commitment to your father's legacy and sharing that um, with the world. What motivates you? What drives you? What inspires you? For me, and we spoke about this again the other day, is my father once broke down and cried with my mother because he felt he couldn't understand why other artists were quote unquote making it and being discovered and recognized when he felt that his work was worthy of being discovered and recognized. Mm -hmm. And uh, once upon a time when he was <clears throat> fighting cancer, he was at my home and he had a really bad night the night before. Um, that morning we're outside having coffee and he tells me with a gleam in his eye, he goes, you know what son, I've become a big fish in a little pond in his hometown, a very really small little town, but he was highly recognized there. And then he went on to tell me, he goes, you know what, one of these days, and he went on to tell me what one of his goals were. And that just impacted me tremendously because he was dying mm -hmm. and he was still looking forward. He was still dreaming yes. and striving for. And he, that just really resonated with me. So when we, as a family, decided to take this on as a project, because this is not our career, we don't know a lot about art and learning as we go, um, there's just no quit. Quit's not an option. It just isn't. Obviously, a lot of the same things. I had conversations with my father, you know, when he was drawing near the end, and, you know, same type of discussions. But now that he's gone and, and my mother is gone, um, the thing that impacts me the most is, is to see his artwork is to, is to recognize his talent and how beautiful his mind worked. But to understand the artist behind the art, to know what, where he came from, all the stories of his life and the challenges that he had, and he still moved forward. The, the intricacy of between him and my mother, because they were one. It, when people connect to the painting, because it's beautiful, that's one thing, but to connect to the painting along with the artist, it brings more to it, and there's a story behind every one of them. Piece of the puzzle that people tend to miss because they see the art, and they go, wow, your dad was amazing but he had a muse, and that muse was our mother. I think Rudy shared once before that he wouldn't sign a painting until she gave the thumbs up. What was the greatest lesson your father ever taught you? For me, it was absolute, total respect for our mother. He was a disciplinarian, he was a great provider, he was a good father that you didn't mess with. <laughs> there was always a line, don't cross that line, and he could, you know, convey that to you and with just a look. You're getting close. close. But the whole everything, and this is again the, the what's behind the artist, and he talked about my mother, um, is to respect her and then respect everybody else. Mm -hmm. Be a man of your word, be respected in your community for what you do and what you can accomplish or, or even not accomplish, but just respect and honor the name of Escalera, and that's, that's where I'm at. Well said. <laughs>